This video is going to give you an overview of how to create the file to laser cut a ruler using Autodesk Inventor and Adobe Illustrator. Now, if you've been using uh, Inventor, this is going to be a really easy exercise to create the actual ruler file. Uh, number one, you're just going to create the part, just like we've seen here. And when I say create a part, this is a very, very, very simple part. It is simply six inches long by one and a half inches wide and 0.2 inches in depth because uh, the depth doesn't really matter for our purposes, but because that's what size material I'm using, that's what I created. As you can see here, it is literally just a block in the shape of the ruler that we are cutting. From here, you create a drawing file from this part and it's gonna look like this. Your outside box is the same size that you created. You just need to make sure that your scale is one to one. That means one inch in your part file is gonna be one inch on this paper here. And this is important. Uh, if this is off, you will have a larger or smaller laser file than you intend to. So please make sure your scale is one to one. Uh, also make sure that you only have the hidden line selected. I do not recommend you use hidden lines removed and certainly do not do shaded or it's going to add a grayscale to your image that you export. Uh, next thing you want to do here is all the lines that were created here for the measurements for the inches and millimeter uh, and even the text was created in the sketch and the way you create a sketch in uh, the drawing file is simply start a sketch select the view that you want to sketch and here you go and you can see here my previous sketches i had one sketch where i put all the inches one sketch uh, where i put all the numbers and one for all the millimeters now do keep in mind that we measure from left to right so zero for inches is on this side but zero for millimeters is actually on the right so I kind of had to make that one upside down, not that that is very difficult. Uh, just make sure that you use uh, a consistent scale. So I use sixteenths because I feel for rulers that's probably as reasonably accurate as we can get, uh, unless you have exceptionally good eyesight. So I created one inch using sixteenths, and the rest I used. Actually, I will show you right here. So as you can see here, here are all my dimensions. If you don't remember or don't know uh, the distance, the decimal distance or the decimal equivalence of a fraction, i.e. 1 16th of an inch, um, run it in a calculator real quick. It is very, very easy. You literally take one, divide it by 16, and it gives you 0 0.0625, which is exactly the number I entered in here for one eighth of an inch. If you do not know the decimal equivalent and you uh, can't access a decimal equivalency chart, take the number one divided by the number eight and guess what you get? 0.125 inches. And you literally just go down the line. So if you need a, a ruler to model after, I'm sure you can find one of those. But essentially it's 16 So this is 1 16th, this is 1 eighth, this is 3 16 this is 4 sixteenths, also known as a quarter inch. This is 5 sixteenths. This is 6 sixteenths, also known as 3 eighths of an inch. 7 sixteenths, 8 sixteenths, which I hope everyone knows is a half an inch. Um, either way you put those in a calculator, you will get the same number. Whether you put in 8 divided by 16 or 1 divided by 2, you're going to get the same number. So you do that all the way down. And then for uniformity's sake, in ease of reading, I have assigned um, some heights to the different uh, fractional lines, and that makes everything look very clean. And this is what you end up with. You end up with your one inch. One of the most exciting things about CAD is you don't need to do all six inches by hand. Once you create one inch, you simply use the rectangular pattern tool and use it to create your other five inches. And you can do the same thing with the millimeters. Once you create the, the first centimeter and millimeter, all you do is re use a rectangular pattern tool and send it on down. 
then you can use the text here. There's a text tool here you could easily add it into. Or, which is also a good option, and if you have a specific taste in text, maybe even preferred, is to add the text in Adobe Illustrator. Now let's show you how to do that. Now, one thing to keep in mind is any lines, any information that you have on this drawing, when you export it, it's gonna go with it. So the less you have, the better. So as you can see, I've already deleted like my title sheet, my border. I am actually gonna delete these before I export it as well, or those are gonna go with it. So once everything is good to go, I'm going to file export as a PDF. I'm going to save that somewhere. Uh, for our sake right now, I'm just going to stick it in documents. And now that is exported. At this point, unless I need to go back and fix anything, I'm done with Autodesk Inventor. So now I'm going to move over to Illustrator, where I already have opened my template. Now the template, uh, if you're in my class, I've given to you, but you should have a template for your laser cutter, where the table size of your laser cutter is the same size as your artboard. Just makes it everything easy here you're going to file place now it took me a while to figure out they don't have an import in this program they have a place it does the same thing called something different it's a good thing you need to get used to if you're going to use it find your file select it and place it now if you're not sure about the size this is a really good time to use the ruler at the top of the screen if I go over to zero, it lines up with six. So this is perfect. If it does not do that, then your scale was probably off. Now, one thing that happens here, and someone more knowledgeable than myself might be able to tell you why, but I can't really change anything here. And if I do try to add colors at this point, it even colors the box around it. So that's no good. The way I've found to get rid of this, to go to layers, and open up my layers and find the bounding box, which is this large box here, especially with all this white airspace, and delete it. And a lot of times there's even more than one, so I have a bunch of boxes to delete. But the good news is once I'm done with that, I have total edit capability on what it is I'm working on, which is what I was looking for the whole time. And unfortunately, this happens very, very often when placing things. And it's really important that you figure this out because for laser files, it's extremely important to assign spe uh, specific colors. And I still have one hiding somewhere. Um, that you have to assign specific colors that tell the machine what it needs to do, whether it's cut, raster, engrave, etc. All right, it could be this one here. So I just have, I think, one more layer I have to figure out here. There it is. One more big box. All right, once you get rid of all those boxes, which sometimes it's one, sometimes it's five or six like that, now I can select individual components. I can ungroup everything. And I can select maybe only the outside, which I think I have as another group. Make sure you ungroup all of it. Then I can select just the outside border although sometimes it's still connected. So I'm gonna hold shift here and deselect all the measurement lines. If it lets me. All right, so I was able to deselect all the measurement lines, and now the only lines selected makes the box on the outside. That is what I wanna make red. For my universal laser system, I know I need red to cut. 
And for my purposes, I need to make it 0 0.001 inches. I just type IN, but it's uh, more clear if I type inches. So now it's even hard to see the thickness of that line, but it is red and it is there. And the machine will recognize that as a cut. So at this point, all my black um, should come through without a problem. All my black fill. Which I do recommend you do that as a fill. Um, but sometimes that doesn't work exactly the way you want. So just make sure your stroke is not thin. That the weight of the stroke is significantly larger than 0 0.001. Um, but I know in my class I can make this cut on the ULS laser that I have. This is sufficient. Just depends on which of the boxes I select for sorting vectors when I import it. Um, but this is a file that will cut and will produce a very, very accurate ruler. Uh, I've done it a bunch of times. I've had a lot of students do it. It works. It's accurate. And it is uh, a fun little project that is a really good starting point for using the laser. Um, after this, you will have a much better understanding of how to create things in the CAD environment. Make a 2D drawing and then take that drawing into Illustrator where you can prep it for the laser cutter. And once you get used to it, it actually goes quite quickly. So that said, this is everything that you need to do. And this file is now ready. So I, at this point, I would file save as a PDF because I like using PDFs. And I would take that over to my laser and cut it. Another option would be you could make these black lines blue so that you could achieve a... Um, so instead of doing a rastering effect, you could do a vector, a vector in gray versus the vector cut of the red. Um, that has come out very well in experience too. It just all depends on for me, my biggest question is how long is it going to take? I like it to go quickly, and I found both the rastering um, and the fill to both be very accurate. So for me, accuracy is not a question, um, but just rather speed and time. So you have some different options. I would recommend you play with them and figure out what you like. Uh, but if you're a student in my class, you're going to do the red with the black fill, and it's going to be a nice quality product.